The purpose of this video is to explain the effect of a rights issue on earnings per share. As shares have changed during the year, it is suggested that the three-column table is used for the calculation of weighted average number of shares. The first column is the current year actual number of shares. This will be used in the calculation of dividends per share. The second column is the current year weighted average. This will be used in the calculation of earnings per share. The third column is the comparative period weighted average that will be used for the comparative period earnings per share. In this example, the company had 200,000 shares at the beginning of the current year. There were also 200,000 shares at the beginning of the prior year. No movement in shares took place in the prior year. During the current year, 20,000 shares were issued in terms of a rights issue. The rights were therefore exercised and 20,000 shares issued. A rights issue is a combination between shares issued for fair value, in other words, resources have changed, and shares issued for no value, in other words, resources have not changed. The shares that were issued for value need to be time-weighted and not restated in the prior year. The shares issued for no value, in other words, the bonus shares, do not need to be time-weighted, but these shares need to restate proportionately. In order to calculate the split of the 20,000 shares that were issued in terms of the rights issue, the following calculation is done. We make use of a table with the following columns. The first column is number of shares. The second column is the rand value per share. And the third column is the total rand value. The number of shares immediately prior to the rights issue were 200,000. At this moment, they were trading at a fair value of 2 rand 50 per share. In terms of the rights issue, 20,000 shares will be issued at 2 rand per share, which is lower than the fair value of 2 rand 50. An X rights value per share is calculated by using the total of 540,000 divided by the total number of shares of 220,000. This theoretical X rights value is then used to calculate the number of shares that would have been issued if they were issued at the X rights value. To do this, the proceeds of the rights issue of 40,000 Rand is divided by the theoretical X rights value. If the rights issue had been done at fair value, only 16,296 shares would have been issued. The rights issue was, however, not done at fair value. 20,000 shares were issued in terms of the rights issue. The difference between the 20,000 and the 16,000 represent the bonus element or those shares that were not issued for value. 
now that we have calculated the split in the 20,000 shares that were issued in terms of the rights issue, we bring those shares into our calculation of weighted average number of shares. The 16,000 shares that were issued for value will be time weighted and in this case the time weighing factor was for six months no adjustment will be done in the prior year. The 3,704 bonus shares will not be time weighted. They will however be restated proportionately in each column. In this example the amount in each column is the same because the total number of shares in each column right before the rights issue are the same. This will not always be the case. The bonus shares are restated in each column proportionately.